Hello and welcome back. When we first opened Revit Architecture 2009, the program greets us with the following welcome screen. Here we can quickly access recent projects, create new families and access various other functions from the menu on the right. Now the first step that we have to take when starting a new project is to open a new document. As in any computer application, this can be done in one of two ways. By clicking new button or by going to file, new, project. The first option brings a default template. What this means is that we are working with the simplest drawing sheet. As you can see in the menu on the left, this project contains only a few floor plans such as level 1 and level 2. Just as a reminder, floor plans and levels are viewed from the top down. In contrast, the second option is much more powerful as it offers many new templates. Once again, to choose it, we go to File, New, Project. The new project window appears on the screen. Now what we want to do is to open a new drawing sheet from our hard drive. To do that, we click Browse, and when the Choose Template window appears, we have the option of selecting one of several templates. Because we are just about to start a house, let's click on the residential default and click Open. Then click OK in the new project window. What this brings is a new document with a lot of things defined for the needs of a residential project. As you can see, unlike the default template where we had only levels 1 and 2, now we have various other plans. For example, in addition to having level 1 or first floor, now we also have first floor electrical plan, first floor framing, foundation, roof framing and lots more. If we go to Elevation View, which shows the building from different sides, we can see all the levels defined for us at the heights most widely used in residential construction. But just for now, because I don't want to confuse you, and we don't really need a lot of the plans defined in the template, I'll go ahead and load the simple default template. Once again, I'll click New in the upper left hand corner. Now we are ready to start drawing. To do that, we go to menu on the left and click on basics at the top if it isn't already selected. To start drawing walls, we simply click on wall. Now what the program offers us is a lot of options for drawing. As a default, a wall is drawn as a straight line. Just to show you, if you click the left mouse button and drag without holding, you will draw a straight line. The program automatically displays the length of the wall. To exit drawing mode, simply click Escape button on your keyboard. Now if we go to this menu and click rectangle and click and drag, we will draw a square configuration with 4 walls. Then if we go to the drop down menu and select any of the other options, we can draw walls in other desired shape. So let's say we go to that list and select circle. Now if we click and drag out, we can create walls in a circular shape. Okay. Next to the wall type selection that we have just discussed, we see the chain checkbox. When selected, this option connects all the walls as we draw them. So if we select wall and draw a straight line without this checkbox selected, we can start drawing the next wall from any other point on the drawing sheet. On the other hand, if we select the chain checkbox and the program will assume that we want to continue drawing from the point where we ended our previous wall. Now if we go to elevation view, or our side view of the building, we can see that our walls are much higher than level 2, which is defined at the height of 10 feet. For now, let's go back to floor plan level 1. If we select one wall, there are two ways of changing its height. We can either right click and go to element properties. You can't see it on my small screen, but the option is on the very bottom of this list. Or simply click on the element properties button. Both options will bring us to the same element properties window. There we can change the unconnected height to 10 feet or constrain the wall height to level 2, which as you may remember is defined at the height of 10 feet. Finally we can click OK and if we go to 3D view by clicking the two arrows in the center and selecting default 3D view, we can see that the wall we had modified is half the height of the other walls. Now. To delete all the scratch work, we can choose between, between two very different options. 
First, because all of the walls are of the same type, we can click on one of them, right click and select Select all instances from the drop down menu and delete all of them by hitting the delete button on the keyboard. In contrast, using second option, we simply click left mouse button, hold, drag across the sheet to create a window and delete everything by hitting delete on the keyboard. By the way, there are two very distinct selection windows. The first one is simply called window and by going from left to right, it selects all the objects completely enclosed within the boundaries of the window. As you can see, the program will not select a wall if the window is only crossing through it. In contrast, the second type of selection is the crossing window. This window, going from right to left, selects all of the objects regardless of whether they are completely enclosed or only touch the window. It's very important that you understand the difference between these two selection methods. This will save you a lot of time later as you progress to scenes filled with a lot of geometry. Okay, moving on.